Yeah, I'm Jaime Evaristo. Uh, I was born in the Philippines. And I'm Naila, also from the Philippines. Our biggest testimony, first of all, was knowing the true God and um, the salvation that's 100% Bible based. And um, the second would be, and also related, is has to do with our marriage. So we were struggling a lot. And so we went through the marriage preparation and also the deliverance. Yeah, I and agree then. with them. <laughs> it's like um, after the marriage preparation and also the deliverance, we experience God's love by restoring our marriage, even healing, and a lot more. Before, uh, it was a mix of a lot of unknowns. Like we were, I think, subconsciously we were playing roles that we, we were self-imposed, also imposed by our culture, mm -hmm. our parents, our relatives, and all that. Not, none of which really were Bible-based. So that led to a lot of trouble <laughs> and struggles, tension. And then we learn in the marriage preparation, um, as we grow, as we started to grow in Christ, our roles as husband and wife, and um, the manifestation of leave and cleave, which is actually biblical. And we also got to see that our marriage is not just a commitment of affection and love for each other, but even higher than a calling, it's a covenant. Okay, so. Because a calling can be, a call can be dropped, a covenant cannot. So, uh, yeah. but, uh, it's yeah. very beautiful because um, five years ago, before we actually moved here to the Netherlands, our marriage is on the verge of separation. And it's, yeah, <laughs> it's very difficult, but God restored everything. And now that God is the center of our marriage, it's like our foundation is very strong. And we have that reassurance that God is in control. And yeah, we're happy. Yeah, it plays a big part of our marriage restoration and reconciliation. Because before, we fight a lot, a lot like every month. <laughs> Or maybe every week. <laughs> yeah. Or every other day. Or every other day. <laughs> <laughs> we went to different help like marriage counseling. Even our friends and family tries to help us, but nothing helped. It's it only like, made things worse. Yeah. It's helpless. But after the deliverance, after after us knowing the true meaning of deliverance, that's the time that we actually felt that we are, we can do better and we are conqueror. We are a conqueror and victorious through the Lord Jesus Christ who gave us the authority to cast away all the works of the enemy in our life. Yeah, I think also with deliverance, what also helped us a lot was to recognize that there's another party involved, a third party, which is the enemy. Because before that, it was just, myself and Myla and so we were we ended up hurting each other like in worst ways imaginable um, but because we didn't recognize recognize at that time the how broken we were uh, because we came from different childhoods and all that so we were almost um, just pouring each other's hurts known and unknown from our past against each other. But with the deliverance message, we learn to recognize that um, if it is not God's, and it certainly is not our will to hurt each other, it must be the enemy. So we kind of learn to see how to isolate that negative spirit and call that by the name of that, that it represents at that moment, which is essentially what the enemy is. Yeah, so I think that was very important to just to not to, to look at the person 
and then the enemy on the side, and then address the enemy and not the person, because we we love each other, and uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I totally agree with them. It's like uh, we learned that <laughs> uh, we do not wrestle against flesh mm. and blood, but with the it's like a spiritual warfare. Mm. So we recognize it right then and there, and uh, it's beautiful because right then and there we can forgive. I can forgive him once again, bless him, let him go. And it's very beautiful because it's very effective. Mm. It's like we are free. It's freedom. Uh, the peace. Yeah, of course it's not perfect. And I think it's going to be a continuous uh, work in progress. But it's so much better than where we were. Like we're now... Um, awareness of what the enemy can really and is trying to do to break the marriage apart, which in effect break the, the family apart. And I think that's the ultimate goal of the enemy, uh, to break families apart. Mm -hmm. And seeing it from that perspective really helps a lot because then it elevates beyond the person, but the, the individual. You know, at least now I have an understanding that it's, it's beyond me. It's a, it's a covenant, my contribution to the future, my family being intact. Um, but without that awareness, before it was just, you know, like cats and dogs fighting and she would go to her family, would go to mine, and then the families would clash and all that kind of... It's chaos. Yeah, just it's chaotic, yeah. yeah. But now we're on the truth and we are very happy. We have peace, we have God. It's not perfect. But, yeah, it's beautiful. We are reassured that God is with us. And now we're expecting a new family member. <laughs> and we are more confident that whatever happens, whatever comes our way, we have God. We're not going to walk this journey alone. And we, we were already delivered, so the enemy has no power over us. Of course, once in a while, it will knock. But we have the authority to cast it away, so it's beautiful. It was not a one-day delivery, so not an overnight <laughs> <laughs> delivery. It took a, took a while. Um, yeah, but building on what Myla said about, about the family, I think it helps, it helps us a lot to recognize our past and the influences of our parents, our siblings, and all that, our environments, our cultures. I think more important than that is that we recognize how important, how big an influence a family has on the, the, the children. So now that we have a daughter and we're expecting a son, so my, my focus now is actually more on if my past had influenced me this way and, and, and mine as well, then we better make sure that we do a better job now yeah. <laughs> for this generation. Um, um, yeah, sometimes it can be daunting, but the awareness just, just helps. So it's, uh, also a salvation story. I came from a household where the, the, the woman was this dominant. It's funny because I think subliminally I thought that was acceptable, but then it also became my open door. I became aware of this during the deliverance. That when I see a dominance in my life, I almost it's an open door for me because it reminded me of and then I realized that it's actually, I, I actually did not like that uh, kind of personality, the dominant uh, wife personality. The king, priest, and prophet, those three roles, really gave me, they say this, the, the authority I did not really have. I was, I felt it was, I felt awkward, like insisting, or at least not insisting, but at least staking a claim on my, on my God given authority. Because we're, at least our generation is now more like equal men, women, and all that emancipation, uh, whatever period in history that was. Um, but I think it's important to still be rooted with what God has called a husband and a wife's uh, roles uh, to be in a marriage. So to me, it's those three roles, the king, priest, and prophet. Yeah, understanding the role as husband and wife is a big thing for us. It's like a game changer. Because before I thought we're like equal, I didn't know that I have to submit to my husband and yeah, so 
that makes it difficult before but that was before but now everything's clear with the help of the holy spirit he's giving us continuous discernment on how to fix our marriage on how to to treat each other as husband and wives and that's beautiful because <laughs> it's really nice that um we know what uh, how how God created a family as husband, as wife, as children. What is your authority? What are your roles? To me, it's the proclamation, the public proclamation. It's not, not just public, it's, you know, it's within the church um, and, and with God. I, I am Evaristo, hereby renew my vow to you as my wedded wife have and to hold from this day forward in prosperity and adversity, in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish and to honor in the Lord. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Till death do us part according to God's holy law and this is my solemn vow. I actually told Myla and when we when we opened the idea to her, and by opening, you know, I told her we're gonna do the renewal of vows. <laughs> so it almost like left her with no choice. But at some point, she she caught up, and I said, "Well, this is our um, we're going to renew our vows in front of the church and in front of God. But of course, it is also in front of the enemy. The enemy sees this, and I, mm -hmm. I think the enemy will also will continue to do what he can do to break us apart. But it's like uh, it's our proclamation." Uh, the, the power of God are going to be like, successful. Yeah, I agree. Actually, at first, I was very hesitant. Like, is this the really is real is this really the right time? Because I have a very big tummy, and we're going to renew our vows in front of everybody. I, Myla de Lumban Evaristo, hereby renew my vow to you as my wedded husband, and to honor in the Lord. Your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. Till death do us part, according to God's holy law, and this is my solemn vow. But I think um, God reveals to me that um, this is the right timing. There is, because at this season in our life that we're living, it's very beautiful to proclaim that we are a couple, a marriage people, where God is the center of it. And renewing our vows is actually very beautiful because we are blessed with prayers by the people that is believing in the one true God. We haven't done that before. We haven't um, mm. had the ceremony, so it's like a new thing for us. And it's beautiful that we have done that. We're very grateful for the opportunity. First, learn how to listen to God's voice and it would be ideal to do that to be able to start doing that even before uh, the potential partner exists because I think that's fundamental um, and everything just springs up from there uh, of course marriage preparation is important and because uh, we did marriage preparation but we're already married so <laughs> yeah it's kind of one of these things is called a, there's a formal term for it, like an, an, an inverse problem, we call it. So you have, you have a situation and you kind of back calculate your way out. We found ourselves in that situation. It would be great if you could build yourself and towards the end point that God wants you to be. Mm -hmm. And as a, as a man, as a future husband, I would really uh, suggest strongly to start to seek guidance and wisdom on how to listen to God's voice. Yeah, I agree with him. I think we have to, to choose a Christian husband and to hear God's God's voice. My husband wasn't Christian when I met him. I thought he was, but... <laughs> I thought I was too. <laughs> and that's where the redemption is. Is coming. Yes. Of course. Yeah. yeah.
at this point of, in our life, we can say that we really can recommend it. Yeah. And for those that may be in a situation like ours, where you will, well, we're already, I don't know, for lack of a better phrase, the damage has already been done, so you cannot undo things. Uh, the beautiful thing about redemption is that as Christ, uh, the scripture says, um, his blood, um, he washes everything white as snow. And it doesn't matter how broken, how um, unideal, or how bad the situation was. God can really fix and give you a clean start. So, Being honest also with your situation and being humble, having the humility, mm -hmm. to be open and receptive to God's words, and that you are helpless without God, mm -hmm. is very important. Yeah, with, the, with me expecting a new baby with us expecting a new baby family member it's quite overwhelming but as i've said earlier it's very reassuring that we have god god is with us and we are more wiser now should i say <laughs> that we have deliverance we were delivered and we have the authority we just have to follow god and god will make a way with everything that will happen to our lives so on top of our prayer agenda now is to uh, that God will lead us to a church that comes from His heart. Yeah. Yeah. More like Shofar uh, Church. You know, have a family and a family. Yes, that's very important. It almost felt like we were brought here to know God in the way that He introduced Himself to us through Shofar Church. And then now that we're kind of, uh, to me, I see it that way. And then we brought back there much more better, much better equipped to continue the, the calling. Yeah, I agree with all the things that we're going to live here in the Netherlands. The church family is actually the most difficult <laughs> mm. to live, to, to yeah. live in. Because um, with here we are welcome. It's like a big warm hub. It has been the door for us to open, to have our spiritual eyes and our spiritual ears to be open so we are more than grateful and that's the work of God we are <laughs> the guidance of the Holy Spirit to lead us to show for Utrecht